There are 25 different titles That's for Antichrist right. in Revelation. Right. 25? 25. He's called the man of sin, the lawless one. You can just go right through and And um, all of these titles are meant to give us a little glimpse into his character, his personality. He is the most wicked, most awful person. I mean, take Hitler and Stalin and uh, Mao Zedong and all those people, yeah. wrap them all up to one and then multiply them and you won't even come close to the awful uh, character of this man. And he's going to gain control of this world, and everyone will be under his domination, because if they aren't, they won't be able to function. So, David, our audience curiosity, my curiosity is, um, where does this man come from? What can you tell us about us, about him, based on biblical revelation? All right. I believe he comes out of the European coalition. The Bible says that early in his in his uh, career, he takes power over three nations, and then with those three nations, he gets power over the European mm -hmm. coalition, and then ultimately he comes to power over all the world. And uh, when we talk about the false prophet in a few moments, you'll learn that his his uh, strategy for gaining control of the world is to provide a license for everybody to basically be alive. Uh, we call it the mark of the beast, but basically this license was set up to control the economy of the world and, and the way the way you qualified to be able to eat and sell and buy and all of that was to worship the beast, mm -hmm. who is the Antichrist, the beast from the sea. Right. And so there, that's where we get the mark of the beast, and, and uh, he, he gain, gains control over all the world. Here's the key thing that he does. He makes a covenant with Israel at the beginning of his career, and he promises to protect them from all of their Arabic enemies and and and, okay. and so Israel goes back home and they they kind of disarm they use all of their inventiveness mm -hmm. and try to rebuild their economy yeah. and the bible says while they're at peace he comes in and he breaks the covenant that he had made with them so the peace treaty is 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 negated at it's the end over. of three and a half years he comes in and he violates their temple he comes in and he destroys he see when he makes the covenant he says you can continue your worship at the end of the three and a half years, he says, that's it, no more. I'm going to be worshipped now. You, you don't worship anymore. And in, in what the Bible calls the, the abomination the, of desolation, the Antichrist actually goes into the Jewish temple. I mean, this is hard to comprehend. He goes into the Holy of Holies. He removes all the furniture, and he sets up a statue in the Holy of Holies, which is an idol unto himself. Mm. And he requires the whole earth to bow down and worship. What degree of persecution does, uh, does Antichrist uh, empower? You know, it's interesting. It's a very insightful question because it's not just all uh, overt persecution. Just stop and think about it for a moment. If you can't buy and you can't sell, you can't, pretty soon you don't have any food. And my, my belief is that many of the people during the tribulation are gonna die from starvation because there won't be any way, they will not be able to participate in the economy of the world and they won't be able to eat. And so little by little, they will, they will, they'll die.